Hi, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, um, where one of the things that uh, we're quite proud of on the channel is the amount of new Sudoku that we receive from you guys. Uh, a lot of you out there are, um, are becoming very, very interesting Sudoku setters. And we had an email uh, to our Gmail account, which is crackingthecryptic at gmail.com, uh, from Cliff the Crafter. Now, Cliff uh, has sent us this puzzle. Uh, which he says is a variant on Minesweeper, so he's mixed up Minesweeper and Sudoku in quite a novel way. Now, let me explain how I think the rules work, and then we can think about how we might solve the puzzle. And just to say, if you want to solve the puzzle online, you can do so by clicking on the link under the video uh, in YouTube, and that will take you to exactly what you're seeing on the screen, so our software where you can, you can try um, the puzzle online. Now, in each 3x3 three three box, there's going to be two of the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then the ninth number will be a 9. So that's how we've meant to fill each row, column, and 3x3 three three box, with the numbers 1 to 4 appearing twice each, and then one number 9. And then the grey cells, the numbers in the grey cells, we're going to play Minesweeper with those um, regarding the number, the number 9. So if there was a 9 here in this box, for instance, then this cell would contain a 1. Well, it could contain a 1 or a 2, I suppose, because there could be a 9 here as well. Um, so obviously, as in Minesweeper, the numbers indicating the mines are looking at all of the surrounding cells, including the diagonally connected cells. So I've not thought about how to do this puzzle before, um, but one thing I do recommend when you're faced with a new variant is just to give yourself a few seconds to think about how the constraint might work. So, one thing that's, I suppose, obvious is that the grey cells cannot contain a 4, because there cannot possibly be 4 number 9s connected to any cell in this Sudoku puzzle. And that includes, obviously, it's possible to have four nines in theory in those squares, but that's going to break Sudoku rules. So although those squares are four connected squares close enough together to be four nines, I don't think it's ever possible, even with a bit of creative positioning, to allow a square to be connected to four of these without the nines also appearing in the same row or column. So, so we can't have four in any of these squares. Now, you can also see that squares like these, because this square is connected to two squares that cannot be nines, this square can only ever be a one or a two in fact, this square can only ever be a 1, because it can only ever see a 1, 9, the 9 being in this block. So, in fact, there is a 9 in one of those two positions. Now, this square can only be a 1 or a 2 because it can see a maximum of two nines. It could, it could see the, a nine in this block, and it can see the nine that might be in this block, but it definitely can't see any other nine. So this is a one or a two. Same must be true of this square. So we can do the same thing at the bottom there, can't we? So that must be a one. This is a one or a two. This is a one or a two. Now, what next? Well, I tell you what we should do. We should use this cell. Because this cell is grey, and because this cell sees a maximum of two ones and nines, or two nines, sorry, the nine here and the nine here, this is also a one or a two. The same must be true there. We've got this symmetry going on. And therefore, in this three by three block, we found all of the numbers all of the ones and twos. We know there's going to be two ones and two twos, and we found them. So this square, this square has to be, has to be a three because we already have done the logic to say it can't be a four. Now that 
is interesting. How are we going to get this to connect to three nines? Especially given that this cell is grey. So this cannot be a nine. This must be a nine because it must, this three must see a nine in this three by three block. And this is the only square it sees that can meet the condition. Now we know one of these two must be a 9 as well, because it needs to see three 9s all together. Well, we can't put the 9 here, because that's going to clash with the 9 we've already got there. So there's a 9 there as well. And this square must be a 3, for the same reasons we've already got the 1s and 2s fixed. So let's put the 3 in here. And there's a 9 in one of these 3 positions. But, because we have a 9 here and a 9 here, it can only be there. It's quite an interesting puzzle, isn't it? Because basically, you almost have to place the 9s you have to place the nines quite early. There must be a 9 in one of these two squares by normal Sudoku rules. 9s in one of those two squares by normal Sudoku rules. This square must be a 1, because it can only see 1, 9, and it does see the 9. Therefore, there's a 9 in one of those two positions. Uh, 9, this can't be a 9 anymore. 9 here. So, what else can we see? 9, 9. There's a 9 either here or here in this top block. Uh, oops. I think there's a problem if the 9 is here. I think we're going to get too many 1s. We're just struggling to exactly articulate why I think that. Let me just show you. It's just a hunch at the moment. But if this is a 9, obviously this square now can only see 1, 1. And this square, 1, 9, sorry. And this square can only see 1, 9. Because both of these squares can only... Uh, they either see a 9 in this 3x3 three three block or this 3x3 three three block. They're the only 9s they could possibly ever see. So once we move the 9 too far away... We get two ones here and have three ones in this block. So, yeah, I wasn't being particularly articulate, but the sort of hunch was correct. So that is a nine, and now this is a two, and now this is a two, which means this is a one. Now this square can only see one nine, so that's a one. So now we've got the ones roughly figured out in this top block. We've got our two threes look in column three, these two threes. So these two squares must be both be four. And this is a three. Now we've done the threes in this row as well. Um, and we're sort of making a little bit of progress. Now one thing I've not checked, it's not in the rules as Cliff the Crafter presented them, is whether these are the only cells that meet the condition. Um, it may be that that is the case, but I won't assume it in, in solving the puzzle. So, let's look down here. We've got the same thing going on, haven't we? If this square is not 9 and the 9 is here, these two squares would both have to be 1 and we get three 1s in the block. So this one must be the 9. Therefore, uh, this is a 2 and this is a 2. And therefore, this is a 1. Um, now, what's next? So this square can only ever see one 9. You can see this 9, but no other 9. So let's put that in. We've done the ones in the central row now. 9, 9. So, oh, we've done the threes in row 9 of the grid. And this square... We've got fours already in column three. So this must be a two. And then the other two squares must be fours. Still need to put uh, a one, two. 
Let's just check this column as well, column three again. We still need to place uh, two ones and a two. And this is a one or a two. The, the actual notation is a bit, a bit weird, isn't it? In this, um, okay. But let's carry on. See what, see what more we can figure out. So the nine. Ah, this must be a nine. Look, because of the nines there. I should have spotted it before. Now there's a nine in either of those two squares. Now that's interesting, because now this square. Oh, actually, that square is a bit awkward. This square must be a one or a two, because it, sorry, it must be a one in fact, because it can't see these nines, and it we know it can't be a zero, and it could see a nine here if this is a nine. So that must be a nine. This must be a one. This must be a one, which means this isn't a one. I like this puzzle. It's very it's very novel. Um, okay, so we've got our ones now. In row one of the grid, got nines, nine. Have we done all the nines? I think we have. Yeah, we've done all our nines. Twos. So this square here, in fact, the fact that we've done all the nines means we can fill in all of these numbers now because we know where all the nines are. So that must be a one. We've done the ones now in this block done the ones in this column this must be a three or a four because we've done the twos in the in the in the three by three box uh, so in this has got to be twos and fours into these two squares but we don't know which way round we know one of them is definitely a four two. And we've got threes and fours along here as well. So this must be a three or a four, three or a four, three or a four. This must be a two or a four again because of the threes here and the ones here. So now if we look down column seven of the grid, we've got one, two, plus three more cells that are twos and fours. So this square cannot actually be a four, that's going to have to be a three. And similarly, this square has to be a three. Okay, along here we need two threes and a four. We can't disambiguate that quite yet, but we know there will be two threes along here. So there must be two threes along Got one three in this block. One of these two squares must be a three. Can't see how to confirm that. Oh, sorry, I could have filled in that nine. Got that yet? <coughs> uh, right. So this square, this square can't be a one. It can't be a two. It must be a three or a four. And now we've done the threes and the fours in column eight. Look. So now we know the rest of this column must be filled with the numbers one and two. And we have two ones here. So these two squares must both be two, which means that must be a four. This must be a one. This must be a one. We've now done the ones in row two. Ones, ones, this must be a three or a four. And we've got we've got the threes there in row two, so that is a four. Apologies, this is it doesn't feel as natural as solving Sudoku normally. That must be four and a three in that order. Um, now we must be looking for two and four into these two squares. And look, we've got twos here, so that's a four and that's two. Now we must need a one and a two to complete this row, which means this is a one and this is a two. Um, now this square must be a three or a four, but I don't think we can tell which way round. We know we've got threes and fours to complete column five now. Now this square can only be a four. And that gives us our fours and our threes in row two of the grid. So we must have two twos to fill in, which we've now can place. 
Now I've got three and four here, look. Must be like that. Now let's have a look down column three. We know we need to place a one and a two. I can't, this square here must be the two. I thought this must be a one. This is a four. This is a four. Therefore, this is a three. This is a four now. Three and four is still perfectly possible here. These two squares must be two and three, and we've got two twos there. So three, two, like that. This must be a three or a four. And presumably this square must be a three or a four. Okay, ah, now this square must be a two, because if we look along this weird notation I'm having to use, we have a three or a four here, a three, a three or a four, a three or a four, so this square definitely can't be another three or four, so that's a two there. Bizarrely enough, that, oh, it does mean we can resolve that, that's going to be a four. Ones. So we're looking for ones and twos into these two squares. Now we have two ones here, so that's a two, that's a one. Oh, this must be a 2, and this must be a 4, which means this is a 3. It's bizarre the way this unwinds itself. Four. Oh, oh, I didn't mean to do that. That must be a 4. Uh, this is a 3, therefore. This must be a 4. This must be a 4. This must be a 3. Hopefully, a 3 there. Does that look like it's going to work? Yes. So. Cliff the Crafter, what an interesting puzzle. Certainly it's not something I've seen before. But what I enjoy, I suppose, I enjoy two things about these puzzles. Firstly, that initial step where you have to just work out how the heck you're going to do anything. And secondly, sort of adapting your form of notation and forcing your brain to think outside its comfort zones. Um, I certainly didn't feel like that was flowing smoothly at all with all these threes and fours and twos and fours in cells and having to keep track of the fact that actually in rows and columns and boxes you could have a repeated digit. So uh, yeah, forced my old brain to do something different, which I always approve of. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the puzzle if you tried it as well. See you next time on Cracking the Cryptic.